Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So this is my first video after my procedure. It's been a couple weeks since then. I wanted to give everybody a little bit of an update on that. It went great, everything went fine, didn't have any problems, complications, and I haven't had any issues. So everything is great, and I'm on the mend, and I'm, I'm still going through that recovery mode. Still have a few more weeks of that to go. So just uh, light duty for a little while still. I can't get out here and um, do any heavy work right now, but what I wanted to do was a viewer mail episode, and that's what this episode is going to be about. I want everybody to know that up front, beginning the video. This is just viewer mail, gifts, new tooling, things like that. So if this isn't your kind of video, click off and go to something else because we're just going to be doing a bunch of talking and show and tell type stuff on this video. I've been kind of collecting some of this viewer mail for a while now. It's been some of it I've had for several months <clears throat> and I just the SNS videos I was trying to gear back into uh, more shop stuff you know machining and and projects and things like that and I didn't want to tie up uh, half the video with viewer mail so I was trying to just let it pile up and then when I get the opportunity just do one episode geared towards viewer mail so this came at a perfect opportunity to do that and I kind of staged everything up out here and and we're going to go through it. We've got a lot of really nice gifts from different people. Uh, we've got some from other YouTube creators. So we're going to go ahead and just dive right into it. Again, that's all this is going to be about is uh, our viewer mail that I want to share, but some really cool things, okay? So our first uh, batch of viewer mail here comes from our friend Keith Finner, Turn Right Machine Works. Everybody should know Keith. Keith was also recently in the hospital and, and had to have a little work done. He got, he got sick there, but uh, luckily for him, they were able to fix him up and get him out the door. So he's doing good. He's been on the mend, and I believe he's back in the shop getting stuff done again. But he had actually sent this. I got this stuff uh, right before he actually went into the hospital. But he was just, he's been going through his shop and uh, getting rid of some stuff and he wanted to send some of these things to me so I want to start with this right here this is something that he has made up for he made it for the Bar Z Bash this year these are T-slot T-slot cleaners it looks like we got two different sizes there They're probably the most common T-slot sizes in the shop so thank you Keith for that that's very nice and he's got it he's got his uh, logo engraved on the back of it right there so very cool gift from Keith. And then the rest of this stuff is, uh, like I said, things that he gathered up. These are all one inch square high speed tool bits. That right there happens to be a Rex AAA, but all of them are uh, one inch high speed. They've probably been ground for uh, lathe use if I would have had to guess. We got some V blocks here, probably shop made, don't know. A Couple of T nuts. And we got a bunch of carbide inserts. Check out this box right here. CNMG 400 inserts, a whole box full of these things. <laughs> now when you have that many inserts, you can afford to blow through them with some face mills, right? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Just a whole assortment of CNMGs and then a bunch of other carbide. There's, um, there's some of these I actually don't have the holders for, but like I said, Keith was just cleaning out, so he thought he would send me some stuff that he didn't need, but just some different carbide. These are big monster TNMAs that uh, I actually don't have a holder for that. But anyway, thank you, Keith. And uh, I really like the T-slot cleaner. This is going to be a nice tool to have. Uh, definitely keep this around the mill and use this often, okay? Thanks, bud. So this next one is a nice little tool that was actually brought to me by Rick Brandt. So Rick is a longtime viewer of the channel, and here recently, within the past couple months, he actually uh, did a little tour around close to my area, uh, did a little southeast tour and visited some of the other YouTube folks, and he came by, and uh, I was busy at work, but he had stopped by there and asked if he could see me, and uh, I did. I came up and uh, talked to him for a few minutes and got to visit with him, and he gave me this cool mic right here, and this is one I wanted to share a little bit closer up because I've, I've never seen a mic like this before. 
and uh, some of you probably haven't either so let's look at the the brand of this right here we're going to move that out of the way so this was made by Reed Small Tool Works and they were let's see where are they Worcester Massachusetts and this is a zero to one inch mic and one of the things that's very unique about this is the decimal equivalence there is actually casted into the the main body of the mic usually when you see them they're kind of pressed in or engraved in there a lot of the stereots have them on there but this is actually a forged with raised letters and I thought that was just really neat and Rick did too and he wanted me to have it so very very neat tool one that you just don't see very often and it's still accurate too if we close it up let's go ahead and bring it up here looks like it's off by one but it was closer I think it's got some dust in there but anyway Rick it was nice to meet you and this is a cool mic and I was happy to share it, share it here on the video and thank you very much it'll go nice down there in the in the nice wooden tool chest I wanted to give him one more look at this and see make sure you guys got it so this is like the back side so that's 64 so now if you look this side right here we start and see how we go one three five seven that's the 64 so one 64 and then the number next to it is your decimal equivalent and it goes all the way around the body of the mic it should go all the way to 63 64 there it is right there all right let's do this side again now that's eighth of an inch that's eight decimal equivalent sixteenths and then this is going to be thirty seconds right here on this side it goes the other way so this group of tooling here was sent to me by Adam Knapp from Hudson Florida and what we have here is two different lots of six inch and eight inch milling cutters those are eight inch and these are the these are the six inch right there and we also have a bag full of arbor spacers I believe they're all inch and a quarter and they appear most of them from the bag here appear to be brand new never used these are very handy when running arbors on uh, either your vertical or horizontal mill <clears throat> if you're running st stub arbors or a full length arbor you, know, you have to shim it with the spacers to get the the cutter where you need positioned on the arbor so that's a great that's a great gift there Adam and I wanted to point out that both of these packs of cutters are brand new and he had told me that I cut them open here just so that you can see how nice they are you know brand new cutters they've never been used but I want to keep them packaged up like this just because they're so well packaged he taped them really well all the edges are protected and I'm not needing any at this moment so I'm gonna keep them just uh, taped up and then when I come come up needing one I'll go ahead and cut it open and get one out but there you go you can see these are the inch and a quarter arbor hole by the way I don't know the brand so I can't see that but we're just gonna leave them just like so so Adam very nice tooling for the shop thank you very much okay our next tool was given to me by Jay Jeremillo from Denver Colorado and what he has sent in is this very nice old school SW card company threading die and these are very these are vintage these have been around for quite a while and he had sent a, a nice letter to go along with the tool right there and one of the things that he had pointed out in his letter was the tapered handle and the center in the end of it right there and was wondering if that's how they actually machine the taper so I'd be interested in to know too but I that I would guess yes that they probably held it on this end 
it's round and then maybe it was turned with that taper now that's a identifying feature of the sw card tap wrenches i have a few i've shown those in past videos i have some of the larger sw card and they made a very fine tap wrench it's a very nice quality tool and this one right here i'm kind of stumped on i'm not really sure but i think this is for a number one screw now for anybody out there that knows better than me you can please leave a comment so that we can all be informed but what i think this is is a number one thread size and then those are all your different thread pitches there so you have 48 40 and it looks like we have uh, 56 and 48 if i'm if i'm reading that right or 64 possibly and what you do is you unscrew it here and then slide the the die blocks back put this over your rod and then you tighten it back up and then it's used to chase the threads just by spinning it like that I just love the way they they put all the detail work in these tools common with all of these old vintage machinery tools there was a name on here let's see GA TAF so that must have been the uh, the owner of this tool originally he had it on both sides there very nice neat tool I love this old stuff and uh, Jay he offered to uh, keep an eye out for other old vintage tools if I was interested and I'd say absolutely if you find anything like this or any other kind of machining tools out there in your uh, Denver area of the world you're welcome to send them along and we'll show them here on the channel okay thanks very much Jay this is a cool gift from my friend Bruce Gratton up in Kutchigu New York and this there's his letter actually was for Abby and it's been kind of sitting here with my pile of viewer mail so I haven't given it to her yet but what this is he says this is a Abby's official space camp pen I don't know what the vintage is he didn't say but it's probably been around for a while so very nice uh, Bruce thank you very much Abby really enjoyed the Space Center up in uh, Huntsville and I, I enjoyed it too a great great place to visit I got a video there if you guys haven't seen it yet really cool place so cool pen Bruce thanks very much I'll be sure to give this to Abby she'll really like it okay so this is some new stuff for me that I picked up a few weeks back I shared uh, my Norton multi oil stone that I found at an antique shop the old cast iron base one that we're going to do some restoration work on and I got to do some uh, you know some internet searching and while I was doing that internet searching I found these guys right here and what these are are cast iron holders for your stones that's got an India stone in it this one is a, a two inch wide by six inch long stone that's what this holder is for and then this one here is for a two by eight stone and they actually come with the stones in there as well I'm gonna clean those things up real good but I actually have a brand new stone uh, that I wanted to put in this but it came with this one so we may I may put my new stone in here I, I don't know yet but we're gonna clean these up this one doesn't look like it's been used very much but it was cut to fit in this so this must have been a, a 12 inch long stone and whoever had it cut it to uh, fit it in here now the the bottom of them were lined with uh, what feels like felt I believe that's felt in there and then the uh, the feet should have been cork that's what that feels like there but they're pretty well worn so they don't really touch anymore but a lot of weight to it so you can you can set these on your workbench or by your machine or whatever and then when you got your uh, your high-speed tools you can sit here and just hone them just like so you know and it keeps them covered and protected I just like them I love this old-school stuff like this just like all the old machinery the way that the you know the effort that they put into this kind of stuff in their casting the way you know the lettering I really like that radius 
in the font there. This one is uh, more straight across. And you see a lot of these that says Pike Manufacturing. So what I have gathered with, uh, you know, the relationship between Norton and, and Pike is that uh, Norton must have contracted Pike Manufacturing to make all these cast iron tools for, for the Norton products. But anyway, I wanted to share that. Another nice couple of tools for the collection here. Uh, but I'm going to be using these just like the other stone. This is going to be a new tool for the, for the mill that was made by one of my viewers. And his name is Tim Turner from Magnolia, Texas. And he has got a company called Hound Dog Machining. So let me tell you about this right here and what this is. This is a light for the mill that he has created and now sells. So you can pick one of these up uh, yourself if you, uh, if you like this design. But a little bit about how this come about is uh, some time back, Tim started watching Keith Finner videos and then he said he started watching other people's videos. He started getting online and bidding on equipment and before you know it, he was in, he had his own shop as a hobby to keep himself busy uh, doing hobby work. And one day when he was on, he, his, uh, he was on a K and T, he's got a K and T mill, said he always had problems seeing. And so he developed this right here and one of his best buddies told him, hey, you should make that fit other mills and sell them. So that's what he's done. He has made a light. So this is an LED light. It's got a like a rope light on the inside right there. And then this line lock right here, a lock line, has an LED inside of it also. So you can kind of position, position this guy around if you want to spotlight something. But it fits around the quill of your milling machine and the, the hole on the side of the head that's got a little thumb screw is where this shank goes up in there and you tighten that thumb screw and this holds it around the quill and lights up. And I think there's some good looking work done right here. This is aluminum body. It's been fully machined. So it looks like it was made out of a solid piece of aluminum and it comes with the power supply, the plug. You can disconnect it right here if you, if you want to get that out of your way. So you can unplug that. And he also has these uh, little straps here for cleaning up your cords and they got magnets on there so you can wrap your cord up and stick it to your machine to get the cord uh, tied up nicely out of your way. Very neat design. I think it's pretty cool. That's the kind of stuff that guys love to do, you know. If you come up with a cool idea and keep yourself busy in the shop making something that you want to make and selling it and, and uh, supporting your, your shop or your hobby, either way. Got his logo there on the side, Hound Dog Machining. And then he's got his, yeah, he's got, his, he's got a patent pending on there, Magnolia, Texas, USA. Pretty neat. So let's go down there to the milling machine and I'll show you how this works. Got it plugged in so you can see the light. So the light fits right here and this hole right here is where this shank of the tool goes up in. The problem that I have with this is my do-all has a quarter inch hole here and this is a 5 16 stem but I believe this is more common with mills. I don't know why this particular mill has a quarter inch hole there but I do know that's the the kind of oddity with this one right here is a quarter inch so I'm gonna have to do a modification to make this one work for mine. I figured what I could probably do is just unbolt this plate and he's probably got this pin pressed into this plate here. And all I got to do is just maybe make a new pin and then turn it. This looks like a hardened dowel pin, so I won't be able to really turn it. I might be able to, but we'll see. I just need to modify this so that I can fit mine. And then once you do, this is where it goes. It fits up right there. Use a thumb screw to tighten it up. And 
there's you some nice light for doing your milling work. Now this is this is pretty cool because it's it's not too bright to where it's creating a glare like my spotlight on this other side. You know, it's 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 bright, but it does create a glare over here on this side. And this LED ring light looks like it'll give you just enough light to help you see what you're doing. And then of course you can point this guy down to give you a nice little spotlight. So I think it's a pretty cool design, Tim. You're doing good. And I dig it. We're just going to do a modification to make it fit. And then we'll start putting it to use, okay? So thank you very much. Very cool. So a little update on the Norton multi oil stone. I went ahead and bought all new stones for this thing. So this guy right here, this is what holds the this is what holds the stones. And it's got the one India stone on there now. But I wanted to go all new, so I went ahead and bought three new stones from Norton. What we have is a fine India, a medium India, and then a soft Arkansas stone. And this is going to be used for honing, you know, fine honing of all my high speed tools here in the shop whenever I do any honing. That's what this will be for. So this soft Arkansas stone is is a finer grit than the India stones. So we have sort of a you know medium fine and then extra fine with the white stone right there. That's the new stones. And while I was at it, I went ahead and picked up one quart of this Norton stone oil. I've never used this before, but I wanted to go ahead and try it for this since we were doing a you know a, a re restoration on the the multi stone here so we'll give that a try and once I get past all my viewer mail stuff this is probably gonna be the first thing I start on we need to remove the brass rivets to get the tag off so we can send that out there to Tom Utley he's gonna help me we're gonna recreate these tags there's also one that goes on the front of the uh, of the stone actually it's on the other side here there's another tag that goes on the front that says Norton Abrasives. And I've got some really good pictures offline. Uh, there's been a lot of people that has sent me links to these online. Uh, so thanks everybody that tuned in for that. I had been doing some researching on my side too. So, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff I had seen and figured out, but we found a, there was an eBay lot for one of these things that was in absolutely near mint condition. And I'm going to use that to uh, help with the rest of restoration of this. I decided we are going to go back with the original color green. So I'm going to use those pictures to try to color match a, a shade of green close to the original. And then we're going to recreate the tags. So that's where we're at on that. Just wanted to share. Always nice to get some new stuff around here in the shop. We got another really special gift from another very special viewer out there. This comes to me from Gallagher Metalworks, and what this is is a stainless steel flagpole holder that is made to mount on a wall. It comes with the screws, also the adapters or the inserts for uh, masonry, and the pin there for the for the flagpole itself. And a nice quality tool, been TIG welded together. It's got a very nice smooth finish to it stainless steel screws so this was uh, made by rich gallagher he's the owner of uh, gallagher metalworks and sent me a very uh, nice and uh, very inspiring letter even though he's he seems to be inspired uh, not only me but others out there in the metalworking community he had fell on some rough times with his uh, wife uh, getting really ill and he said that he had to uh, sell off a lot of his equipment uh, to be able to pay for medical expenses and help his wife out things like that and was just having a really tough time but he was able to uh, come up with this design right here and start reproducing an item and start you know earning some income again so uh, he said that in his letter right here that anytime he was feeling down that he would he would pull up one of my videos and feel inspired and and uh 
get back out in his shop and, and use what tools that he had left to, to get going again. And that's what he wants to do is uh, uh, get the ball rolling and try to build up another shop so he can stay busy again doing machining and fabricating. So, Rich, uh, thank you very much. This is nice, and uh, he said in his letter that he thinks this would go well on the front of my new shop here. You know, the, the, the addition that we did and the new paint and everything, it looks nice out there. So I think you're right. I may mount this on the front wall of the shop and get me a new flag and hang it out there. So very nice, Rich. I like his little engraving there at the bottom, GMW. Thank you very much, Rich. So Shores has sent me their new digital caliper, the IP67 rated uh, digital caliper. These are for uh, you know waterproof, coolant proof, things like that. Now I've been using these for quite a while now. This is the ones that I'm using around the shop, the eight inch Aventor calipers. And this is another good time to kind of show this again because I do get a lot of guys that comment on these asking me, uh, what brand that is and and how I like them so I got to say that these have worked well I don't have any complaints out of them I use them every single day at work I've got another eight inch there at work and they look a lot more worn than this because I use them every single day but they're just a great caliper and it's a good it's a good tool for the money I believe these are around 50 to 60 dollars uh, but you can definitely go to the Shards website I'll have a link to these in the in the video description anyway, so you can click on that if you so choose to. But we got the eight inch and the 12 inch. So I actually wanted to do a test with these things and I haven't got around to it yet. And it uh, looks like they did send me the ones with the calibration certificate. And we'll go ahead and I'll pull these things out of the bag and we'll, I'll get the battery in them and check them out but these are supposed to be safe calipers oh they already got the battery in them okay these are supposed to be safe around coolant so if these things get dropped in water or coolant or used around a machine and they get in coolant splashed on them it's not supposed to affect the reader head here I wanted to do a test where I actually put these in some liquid and prove it to myself here on video that they do what they're supposed to do. Looks like the display is uh, slightly different than the other model. You can see it's got a little yellowish hint there to it. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. So, uh, Rick over at SARS, thanks very much. We're going to put these things to the test and see how they do, okay? Just wanted to go ahead and get these out of the bag too and make sure they were working. These also came with the calibration certificate. This is a new tool purchase from my friend Jack Hoing. I'll have his link in the video description down below. He sells used machinist tools and I've gotten quite a few nice tools from him. And this is one that I've been looking for. I've got one of these at work, but I wanted another one to have here in the shop. So this is an inner rapid test indicator. And this is the, what's considered the vertical mount. The mount right there, it goes in one of the holders. I didn't grab it. Let me let me get a holder here in a second. I'll show you how this, how this can be used. But this is one he come across in one of his purchases and it's in fine condition. Must have been the previous owner, Weber. works good so I found that this indicator right here this this style of indicator with the with the original style holder it's not in this box right here 
works really well for centering holes. And, and the, the reason why I like this dial is because the way you mount it, you can more easily keep the dial face positioned at you instead of around here on the side. You know, if you're going around trying to indicate something, you're usually kind of chasing it or you're having to position it so that you can kind of see it up. This one, you can pretty much keep this mounted straight up all the time. So as you're going around indicating a hole, you're always seeing it. Let me grab that other holder and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm a little embarrassed right now because I can't find that holder uh, that I know that I have and I, I don't understand it, if I misplaced it or what I did, but this other box, this other interrupted indicator right here, I had that other holder was in here and I just, I can't think of what happened to it. I've looked in my toolboxes, but whatever. If I can't find it, I'll just find me another one. They're on, they're on eBay. Here's the other Interrapid that I have. And then we've also got uh, one more right here. And I brought these out so that you could, I could show you the difference between the two models with the uh, horizontal and vertical mount. So this would be your vertical. And then this one is your horizontal. So when you sit them side by side, you kind of see how they're configured. I wish I had that other holder, but I do have a little video using the one at work that I'll throw up there on the screen so you can kind of see. But this goes in a holder there, and it's got a couple articulating arms that go up, and you put it in your collet, and you spin your turn your spindle and it just stays perfectly in view all the time. So that was in really good shape, has been well taken care of. So uh, thanks Jack for hooking me up like you always do. And I'm gonna show you a couple other little extras that he threw in with this purchase. We got this two inch roughing end mill that's still in good shape. A lot of life left in that. We got another big end mill right here. This is a one and seven eighths end mill, inch and a quarter shank. And we got one more right here. Let's see what this one was. I don't remember now. Another roughing mill, one inch. Looks like a four inch length, one inch roughing end mill. Nice stuff, Jack. Thank you very much. Last couple items we're gonna share is some books that come in. So. Machining Fundamentals, it's like a textbook, you know, out of a, out of a school. Uh, this is sent in by Uncle Bob's Workshop out of Seven Points, Texas. And it really is like a uh, school's book. It's got a lot of uh, quizzes in there, a lot of questions and answers, but a very neat, very neat book on the principles of machining. That one's going to be fun to go through. It's got some good diagrams, nice uh, big pictures in there, easy to see. And then uh, our friend Bruce Gratton again uh, sent in these two books right here. Bruce from Kutchigu, New York. You got CNC machining and then also a workbook for technology of machine tools. Now, this is a much newer version. This again is just like the, uh, the other book. It's more of a textbook for schools and colleges. Lots of uh, quizzes in there. So. Nice books, everybody. Thank you very much. I always like adding these to my to my machining library. <laughs> so that's going to wrap up this video. I hope everybody enjoyed. I want to give another thanks to everybody out there that has sent in a, a gift or a tool to use around here. It's very much appreciated. And I do have one more over here that I didn't get to, but I decided I would like to uh, do another video ded dedicated to that box because we're going to have to open it up. And it's going to be an application to use in the shop for some uh, tool cleaning. A uh, gift from my friend Alex Brown over on Instagram, uh, Caveman Welding. I've been promising to get to his gift for some time and I haven't got to it yet, but we're going to make a video on his stuff that he sent in and uh, clean up some of my tools with it. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in. And as I said, everything's doing fine over here. Just doing some real light duty stuff like I'm showing you today. And I hope to be able to get back at it real soon. All right, so we'll see you on the next video.